Welcome to the Straight Park Connection with Tommy. This video is going to be on TNA Wrestling, Impact Wrestling show on Thursday night, and also the identity of the person who played Abyss on at the Slammiversary pay per view was a student of uh, 3D Academy. Which I will go into details in just a few minutes. As always, I give some uh, wrestling news from TNA or is it Impact Wrestling now. Eric Young noted on his Twitter account that he had underwent throat surgery on yesterday. Young said that the surgery was to remove polyps. Young tweeted the following throat surgery again today. Whee! surgery sucks. I have had nothing to eat or drink since last night at 10 p.m. I want to kill somebody right now, right about now. My, sur my surgery starts in 30 minutes and I'm still waiting. I'm still in waiting room. So he says, still in waiting room for surgery. They have no idea how close they are from death. Like at real Bobby Roode, real Bobby Roode after four hours with without food at Robbie E. Is it? Yeah, Robbie E. Impact. Those are his uh, buddies on on, uh, on Twitter. And then he goes on about the saying, S sur surgery, uh, surgery done done went great. Thanks to everyone. Since 2004, Eric Young has been has undergone over 15 throat surgeries, and this makes number 16. And that's why he's got a deep, deep voice. Dixie Carter posted the following update on Chris Saban's injury that happened on Thursday night's Impact. Chris Saban tore his ACL in last night's Ultimate X match on Impact. He obviously frustrated. He's obviously frustrated, but determined to come back ASAP. Unquote. As of this writing, Saban was training worldwide on Twitter. During the match, he uh, tweaked his knee, the same one that was, what was it, his knee or his, le his leg. He was holding his knee during the match as he went over the top and out to the floor. He was wearing a deep knee brace on it, the knee after he's, he'd been out almost a year <coughs> with a previous injury. Robbie T. may be also injured from a house show in Belton, Texas. Also on the uh, on Thursday night, since they were doing the uh, live impact taping, well, the other remaining people that was not on the TV taping, such as Mickey James, uh, Douglas Williams, Matt Morgan, returned uh, return to action. I will give the results in that match because uh, he was lipping the entire match with D Douglas Williams. Matt Morgan also wrestled. He defeated Crimson, 7 minutes 49 seconds. Crimson's losing streak extended to 2 after fall, falling to Morgan's big boot. The carbon boot print, footprint, whatever he calls it. There was a botched 3 count about a minute before the actual finish when Morgan hit, hit a kick. And it seemed like Crimson thought it was, it was the time. Well, he never kicked out of it. The following wrestlers have been... Named for the TNA Bound for Glory series. Samoa Joe, Bully Ray, Mr. Anderson, Robbie E., Magnus, Kurt Angle, AJ Styles, Rob Van Dam, D'Angelo De Niro, the Pope. He actually was in, in, in a match on Impact as well. Jeff Hardy, Christopher Daniels, and James Storm. The latest version of the series kicked off on Thursday's Impact. James Storm scored 20 points by winning a Gauntlet Battle Royal. Storm had to be considered the, the favorite to win, given that all signs point to him challenging Bobby Roode for the TNA title at Bound for Glory. Here's hoping that he, he, that's the plan, and that seems like the best option regardless whether it's predictable or not. My guess it'll still be the lame finishes that, that Bobby Roode always does. Gimmick finishes. During a dark match prior to the Live Impact Wrestling show, Magnus defeated Jay Bradley. 
Bradley competed for WWE as Ryan Braddock in 2008-2009. Former adult star uh, and independent wrestling personality Trina Michaels was also backstage at uh, last week's Impact Taping Wrestling. She did have a meeting with the company and pitched a story of feuding with Brooke Hogan on screen. And the man who played Abyss at last night, at uh, Sunday night's Slammiversary pay per view, was a student named Lance from Team 3D's Wrestling School in Florida. And now for the third edition of the live out of thir uh, the third out of thirteen live impact episodes of the summer series open with a silent video on James Storm losing to Bobby Roode at lockdown in April. The sound then came on for a recap of Storm leaving TNA for two months, finding himself in nature and returning at San Jose to end Crimson Streak. The focus was on whether Storm can compete, can complete his TNA title quest now that he has returned. And in the impact zone, Mike Tanay and Taz set, 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 up the, set the stage for the show. Noting the show is starting with Ultimate X for the X Division title. The BFG series is returning. And Rude will defend the TNA World title against Mr. Anderson. Wait for it. Anderson. And his assholes in the main event. Already in the ring for Ultimate X match were Chris Saban and Zima Ion. X Division Champion Austin Aries was then introduced for his next title defense. The Ultimate X match. Okay, as the bell sounded, the announcers hyped Aries conquering Samoa Joe. At time of our on, on this past Sunday, the match started with it Saban and Aries clearing Ion from the ring before engaging in a, in a mid ring, back and forth action. Yeah, cause every counter was another counter, and their counter was another counter. Ion then tried to sneak, sneak back into the ring, but Saban cut him off. Today noted that Saban is a veteran of the match, claiming Saban has appeared in 15 Ultimate X bouts. All three men became involved as the announcers plugged the BFG series starting tonight. Aries then cleared the ring, and Saban sold a left knee injury. Which isn't good, because he's only been back like two weeks. Even if he's selling, uh, he, he followed with, with a d double suicide dive. Then ran around the ring to celebrate as the referees chased him down to offer some, some instructions. Back in the ring, Aries and Ion had a mid-ring exchange while Saban continued to sell out, sell, sell at ringside. Saban then t uh, slid into the ring and hobbled over to Aries to deck him before rolling out of the ring again. Saban disappeared disappeared ringside as Aries and Ion resumed an exchange on the top turnbuckle, which led to Ion sliding down on the up one of the trusses, holding up the structure. Ion recovered and tried to go after Aries again, but Aries delivered a big hurrah karata, followed by a snap brain buster set a ring. Aries then quickly scaled the cables. Grabbed the title, unhooked it, and then after a few minutes, and then dropped because he was upside down. He dropped to the mat with the possession of the title on his feet. Taz said, "It's just another day at the office for Aries." After the match, Aries uh, celebrated his victory while Sable was helped away from the ringside. They replayed Saban's mid-match injury before showing Aries' his victory with an impressive fact, fashion. Aries then took the mic and walked into TNA one year ago and made some hefty claims. He said he can beat anyone in TNA and he's pound, and he's pound for pound the most complete package in wrestling. Aries said people, people thought that was a lot of hair at first. But then he started knocking, knocking out home runs. Whether he's first, fourth, or last match, he's always the main event. Aries said he's not satisfied as ex champ and things moving at a snail's pace. Suddenly, Hogan's music plays. Aries says he's just the man he wants to see. 
Hogan stood on uh, stood on stage d- doing the Hogan look in the crowd before they cut to the break commercial break. Back from the break, Hogan made his way into the ring to join all, uh, a double. The camera focused on Hogan pacing around the ring before addressing Aries and that that he's making a big request to be in the main event. Hogan shifted shifted it to his career, saying that he's already been wherever Aries want, wants to go. Aries cut off Hogan, who kept talking about his career, said the one thing that he's, he's never done is got the kind of goosebumps he gets when Aries wrestles. Hogan said, wait for it. Wait for it. He can take Aries to a whole other level. He then called Aries the greatest thing he's ever seen in the in this ring. Hogan said he's willing to book Aries against the World Heavyweight Champion on one condition. He said he cannot have one man as both both champ, champions of both both divisions. So Aries has to, has to give up the X Division title. Aries let, let that sink for a moment. Hogan says Aries can challenge for the world title at Destination X. But if he loses, then he walks away with nothing. Aries thought it over before Hogan said he thinks Aries can do it. Aries then busted his tail for the title and he just wants wants him to hand uh, hand over the title. Hogan said he doesn't want Aries to hand it over because he wants to see Aries get the get to the next level as a true main eventer. Hogan told Aries he, he has one week to give give him a decision. Aries called it fair enough before Hogan's music played as he exited. Still to come segment, Sting talks about his TNA Hall of Fame induction and presumably losing in the TNA World Title main event. Which was your main event tonight? It was the last thing before they went off the air. Well, they, uh, back in a uh, catering area, Joseph Park was t- telling random people that he felt so at home in the, in the ring at some anniversary. Everyone left when they stopped, when they spotted Bully Ray off camera. And Park was uh, sitting there just t- trying to eat, like, say, what, 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 what? Like, he didn't know what was going on. Park tried to back, back down from Ray, but uh, who demanded to know where his brother is. Park said the last time he saw him, he was putting Ray through a table. That didn't sit well with Ray, who turned over the table and vowed not to rest until he finds the best as they go to commercial break. Back in the impact zone, Hernandez's music played to bring out Hernandez for a TV title since he's no longer with Mexican America. Uh, because his uh, partner has had gotten released. Well, uh, Hernandez was out for a TV t- uh, title challenge for uh, fresh off his return victory over Kid Cash at Slammiversary. Today said Hernandez impressed Hogan with his win at the pay-per-view. TV champ D- Devon was out next to defend the title as the announcers recapped Devon's tag victory over the Robbies at pay- pay-per-view because he defeated both of them. So it's Devon versus Hernandez for the TNA title. And for those that have not seen Hernandez in person, he's a huge dude. 6'4", 6'5"-ish. 270, 280-ish. He's my weight. It used to be my weight since I've lost quite a few pounds. I'm only down to like 259, 260 now. Okay. Devon stood uh, ringside, waiting for uh, to make his entrance. Hernandez came flying over the top rope with a su- uh, super splash, halfway across the ring. That is when he dove out and landed on what like the clothesline. Hernandez then rolled Devon back into the ring, and despite the unfair start, ref called for the bell, and Hernandez made a quick cover for, for a two count. Hernandez then, then settled into a bear hug, trying to wear down Devon. After breaking free, Devon came, came flying off the ropes with a big shoulder tackle for himself. In the center of the ring, two men traded bombs center the ring before Devon built momentum with successive offense. Suddenly, Hernandez came running out of out of the corner with a big shoulder tackle. That sent Devon flying across the ring. 
It was good for a two count only. Hernandez tried to set up the top rope move, but couldn't find his balance. As Devon stood on his feet and waiting, Hernandez eventually attempted to move off the top rope for a two. Then Devon back with a spine buster finisher for the pin and the win. That match only took like three three minutes, uh, 34 seconds. Devon retains the title. Very good sequences during the match before the, the clunky finish. Last week recap video, Daniels confronted TNA president Dixie Cutter about allegedly finding a suitable replacement for her husband in the form of AJ Styles. Backstage, earlier today's segment, Dixie told Styles that she tried to she tried to get, uh, tell the truth to everyone last week, but Daniels interrupted. Styles said that they need to just get get this out in the open tonight. Dixie said she doesn't want people to get hurt, but Styles retorted that people are already getting hurt. Dixie told AJ not to get hurt during a match tonight, his match tonight. She'll figure out what to do. Then up next is Bound for Glory series gauntlet match, 12 man gauntlet match. I uh, only kind of, kind of like five or six guys at one time. Well, they went to the commercial break, and earlier today, uh, World Heavyweight Champion Bobby Roode was shown arriving in the Impact Zone in anticipation for his title defense later on tonight. Back in the Impact, Impact Zone, Tanae set the stage for the Battle for Glory series. 12 man gauntlet battle royal. Out first was new TNA champion. Tag Team Champion, AJ Styles, as the first entrant into the BFG series. Jeff Hardy was out next as the second entrant. They noted that the winner of the BFG series will challenge for the TNA World title at Bound for Glory as the gauntlet tonight. A new entrant will enter the Battle Royal every 90 seconds before the last man standing takes 20 points. After some back and forth action between Hardy and Styles, Rob Van Dam came out as the third entrance. Van Dam executed trademark, trademark high flying offense before they cut to a break with RVD posing in the ring. Another commercial break. Back live, Bully Ray's music played to bring him out as the fifth entrant. During the break, Magnus entered as the fourth, fourth entrant, and there was no eliminations. Uh, eventual, uh, Ray eventually hit the ring and did some damage before Kurt Angle entered as number six. Angle cleaned house before focusing on Ray to stomp him a hole in him in the corner. Still no eliminations yet. Pope, D'Angelo De Niro's music plays and finally he's, he's back after, what, six, seven months of no competing? As he was number seven today, he says he'd been out, he'd been away doing TV and movies. I've seen nothing with him. Hope clean house before Ray attacked him before, before behind to cut off Pope's momentum. Hardy, who had been selling a, an injury after the break, was eliminated for the first cut of the evening. So what's this? Another injury? So that's like four injuries. Well, we'll have to see what the injury on that one is. Suddenly, Abyss appeared from under the ring and yanked Ray over the top rope as everyone watched. Apparently, that's legal in TNA, so Hardy and Ray are out. Chaos resumed, leading to a break, which was a commercial break. Back live, Robbie E. was in the ring as the eighth entrant, and there were no eliminations during the break. Suddenly, RVD was eliminated. Daniels then came out as the ninth entrant. Daniels pointed to the crowd, walked into the ring, and ate a springboard forearm smash from an angry Styles. Styles suddenly and accidentally nailed Angle in the head with a Pele kick when Daniels ducked. Then Daniels tossed a distracted Styles over the top rope. Moments later, Angle was eliminated as, at Styles' feet, ending the night for the new tag champions. Styles tried to give Angle some aid, leading to the top of the hour. Samoa Joe's music play, uh, played, and he's the next entrant into the the event as number 10. Joe walked right up to Robbie and eliminated him, then lit up Magnus with a chop. 
Former tag champs uh, had a stare down in the center of the ring. They traded blows before Magnus landed a big boot. But Joe pulled down the top rope, and Magnus went flying to the outside for another elimination. So as Joe, Daniels, Pope were left in the ring. Final entrant was number Final entrant number eleven was James Storm, who eliminated Pope right away. Then towed off on Daniels as Joe sold in the corner. Storm eliminated Pope, leaving Joe and Storm. Mike Tenay then passed along a word that whoever does not win the TNA World Title match later tonight will be the 12th man in the, in the BFG series. Joe and Storm battled on the, on the ring apron. This Storm landed a last call super kick to send Joe off the ring apron to the floor and win. Storm gets 20 points. So, Storm won the 20 points in the BFG series. Plenty of inter interesting developments sprinkled throughout this match to set the stage for the three-month BFG series. Overall, nice quality, lengthy match to bridge the gap from the first to the second hour. After the match, Storm celebrated with a few beers before taking the mic. Storm said the last time he was on Impact, he talked about thinking his luck ran out. He said for the last two months, he's been spending time with his family, contemplating his wrestling career. Storm said his daughter asked him a tough question about whether he's returning to wrestling. And he found out how much it means to to his little girl. Storm said the same anniversary, at the same anniversary, and even tonight, he realized how much he, it mean, he means to the fans. Storm said he made a promise to his little girl, and he will make a promise to everyone watching that he came back to become World Heavyweight Champion. <coughs> we then get a welcome back chant from the crowd. I don't remember if they were singing the uh, Welcome Back Carter uh, version of it or just Welcome Back. And if I didn't ma make myself clear, the Cowboy J Storm is back, he, he shouted. Storm told Bobby Roode that he wants him to listen because he hopes and prays that Roode will still be World Champion after a BFG series is over. Because that's just going to be a bonus on whooping his ass. End of that one. Uh, backstage, Bobby Roode was shown in the hallway selling determination. A mystery interviewer asked Roode if he's nervous about Storm returning to TNA. Roode claimed Storm is jealous of him, just like everyone else in wrestling. Roode said he has no problems facing Storm again, but as for tonight... He has bigger, a bigger fish to fry in the, in the form of an a, an a hole. Leading to the break, they faded to a graphic on open fight night, open call out, no voices provided info on the graphic as they go to commercial. Uh, get back from the commercials, backstage segment following the battle royal. Angle and Styles were shown in the locker room. Area, Angle wanted to know what's up with Styles, telling him to get, get get the deal with Dixie straightened out. Angle then shouted at Styles to get 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 his shit get the shit out of his head because he's screwing up and it could cost them, them the tag titles. Styles vowed to get his get this to get it straight. And your knockouts match, Miss Tess Mocker defended her. Title. Uh, well, it says, uh, okay, the knockouts match was not for the title. And she faced Madison Rain. Back in the impact zone, Rain came out first to f face off the new knockouts champion, fresh off her title victory at anniversary in her home state. Rain quickly took control of the match, then Terrence Parker came back with a success, uh, successive offense. Rain cut off Tessmacher, but Tessmacher hit a leap, uh, leg sweep finish for the win, pin and the win. Tessmacher won a two minute 50, 50 second match. Fine start to Tessmacher's little title reign, trying to establish some credibility with a clean victory using her finish. Then they got another backstage segment. Brooke Hogan was shown talking to Gail Kim about. Gail wanting to get her knockout title rematch. Brooke informed her that her that the knockout title will be defended on open fight night next week. 
And she has four knockouts in mind, but Gale isn't one of them. Note this, uh, TNA used three of four different cam camera angles to capture Brooks' reaction. As the discussion with Gail Kim be became more contentious, Brooke evenly, eventually walked out, leaving Gail frustrated, not not included in the, in the new match next week. And then they got a last Sunday segment where Mr. Anderson was shown talking into a camera about not forgetting Bobby Roode's beer bottle shot over the head a few months ago. Anderson said he doesn't need to resort to those tactics to get revenge because he'll spin Rude around, introduce himself, and beat him. Uh, well, let's spin, uh, we're going to rename the game. Let's spin the Bobby. Uh, instead of spin the bottle, you're going to spin the Bobby. Then we get a box, uh, backstage uh, Bobby Rude segment uh, shown walking down the hallway preparing for his title defense tonight. Anderson was then shown walking down the hallway. And Mike Tanay said the title match is up next as we go to commercial. Back in the Impact Zone, back live. Mr. Anderson music plays and to bring out a new number one contender to the TNA title. Anderson stood on stage, bypassed the mic drop to sell the seriousness of the match tonight. <coughs> After Anderson made his way to the uh, ring with purpose, the chance music played to bring out Bobby Roode on stage for his latest title defense. Once everyone was on was assembled in the <coughs> ring, Jeremy Borash was shown in the <coughs> ring to handle the <coughs> former ring intros. Anderson was cheered loudly, and, and Rue was booed heavily, as expected. Rue quickly handed over the title belt, and then the ref quickly handed it off to the ringside before calling for the bell, making it seem like they're they're pressed for time. So we get the uh, the title match up next. Anderson quickly took it to Rude, but uh, the, the, uh, he then bailed out from the ring as he did his time for mercy. Rude then turned the tables and knocked Anderson on the floor, but airballed the pl plancha attempt. Anderson ran Rude into the ring steps and ta taunted him at ringside, leading to the break. There was a commercial break. Back live, Rude and Anderson in a headlock center of the ring. Rue continued to apply pressure to Anderson, who, who tried to fight back with, an, with elbow strikes before ex executing a backslide for a two count. Rue then allowed allowed Anderson in the el uh, elbowed Anderson in, in the back of the head before landing a net breaker for a near fall. Rue then went to work on the back of uh, the head head and neck, looking to exploit before landing a neck breaker for a near fall. So Rude went to uh, went to work on the on the back back and head and neck looking to exploit Anderson's past, past concussion issues. Anderson absorbed the attack, then made a comeback with a with a successive offensive before landing a spin wheel kick to the head. Anderson set up the mic check, but Rude ducked it and slapped, slapped on a cross face. Submission in the center of the ring. Anderson escaped. Then scored a series of close near falls before Rude ro ro rolled out to the ring apron. From the ring apron, Rude yanked Anderson's left shoulder across the rope. Rude followed with a, a whip into the top, top turnbuckle before slapping on a cross face again. Anderson fought, fought the hold as Taz noted, noted he must be in a lot of pain at, at this point. Anderson tried to get, get, get to the bottom rope. But had no chance but but to tap out. Taz quickly covered. For, Taz quickly covered for Anderson, saying that there's no shame in tapping in that situation. Anderson was showing shown recovering in the corner with with a stern look on his face as Rude celebrated the win by standing tall in the ring. Well, to me, he had no. It was like, yeah, you may have won this time, kind of look. I got you next time. Wasn't even selling the, the injury or the, the submission hold. So uh, Bobby Roode won a match without any outside help or gimmick finishes. A pretty decent match myself in my eyes. 
I'll give them props. They actually worked their asses off in this match. Uh, backstage, Dixie Carter was shown talking to AJ Styles in, a, in the hallway again. She said that they, they have to get this cleared up by next week. Styles has said it's affected him in the ring with Kurt at home. <sighs> with Kurt and at home. Dixie tried to calm him down and convince that they'll get this cleared up next week. They hugged it out. As they go to Slammiversary Highlights, Dixie was then shown at inducting Sting into the TNA Hall of Fame at the pay-per-view. Backstage uh, was a segment shown with Sting walking down the hallway. He'll be in the main event segment. It's a commercial break. To end the show. The Sting Hall of Fame celebration highlights were shown. Sting was shown walking backstage. Highlights in the gauntlet earlier in the night were shown with the word live in the corner during the highlights of action an hour, an hour ago. Mike Tanay and Taz hyped the open fight night as a part of the Battle for Glory series and then also gut check. They reviewed more highlights of the Ultimate X match and Hogan's ult ultimatum towards Aries. Jeremy Borash recapped the TNA Hall of Fame announcement and threw it. Just gave the mic the, to a sting. Uh, actually, they, okay, he, he, they throw a, a video package for Simon anniversary. Borash then introduced Sting, who came to the ring in a t-shirt, face paint, and his wrestling gear. Sting then took the microphone and said it was obvious that Simon Versi, as Simon Versi will go down in history as one of his greatest nights he has ever experienced in pro wrestling. He said that, the, uh, that for two weeks leading up to Simon Versi, all he wanted to do was take a chunk out of Rude's hind, and he did. He said that it, to be the first inductee into the Hall of Fame means a lot to him. He's he said that up on that up on that. That stage, there there were many others that deserved the honor. They thanked Jerry and Jeff Jarrett for starting TNA. Then he tried to thank Dixie Carter. Just as three masked men entered the ring, like, all, like three different sizes, two dudes were pretty huge, and the other guy was kind of like Christian Cage's size, somewhat. As they attacked him, well, Sandy tried to escape but couldn't get away from all three dudes. The crowd chanted for, for Hogan as they put the boots to Sting as the show went off the air with Sting being beaten, being kicked down. And there has been no reports on who the, these three guys are as of yet. And I'm still looking for them. Hopefully by next Thursday I'll have the results for that. Well that ends my 10A Impact Wrestling video for this this week I will be posting the next one the uh, next video will be on NXT in the never ending ending season has actually ended and the new season that has already been taped last month will be debuting next week so stay, stay tuned for episode 4 and 5 I believe that's what it is no, this is five and six.